Hello and welcome to the new series of Drishti IS. I am Pooja Divedi and in this segment today we are going to talk about the increase in threats to the cyber space of India. This topic is important from the perspective of prelims and also from the perspective of GS mains paper 2 and 3. So let's begin. But before we begin, I would like to introduce you to a course for the Hindi medium, the UPPSC revision course, the quick revision course, which will provide you quickly in 80 classes the revision of important segments of the GS. And if you want to know more about it, you can contact on the given number as it is available in the online mode on the Drishti Learning app. So let's begin with why in news. So why in news is going to be our first topic, which will be followed by cyber attack, cyber crime and cyber security. We will also talk about search in the challenges related to the security of cyberspace. We will also talk about the initiatives undertaken by the government, the way forward and in the last of the segment, I'm going to give you a main space question for answer writing practice. So let's begin with why in news. This is a news because the Ministry of Information and Technology has ramped up its efforts in order to have a proper vigilance on the sectors such as vaccine, logistics, even pharmaceuticals and power sector. Now, if we talk about the breaches, the breaches have increased, the cyber attacks have increased in the last few years, especially from Chinese groups, Chinese hackers as well as Russian hackers, not only in India but around the globe. But we will cite certain examples which will make you think that yes, India needs a strong data protection bill and also needs to strengthen a firewall when it comes to Chinese hackers. So, if we talk about this, India, it is ranking second in the Asia-Pacific region who, which has been continuously tried to get infiltrated by cyber hackers in the year 2020, the first being Japan. and. After Japan comes India. If we talk about which are the sectors which were most attacked, these were finance, insurance, followed by manufacturing and then services. Now, if we talk about the kind of attack that were involved, ransomware, it accounts for 40% of the attacks when it comes to cybersecurity breaches. Now, if you remember, it was actually in the year 2020, on October, in October 2020, when cyber hit on Dr. Reddy's labs as COVID vaccine works begin, when the initial level, the initial beginning on the procedure or trials of COVID-19 began, then there was a cyber attack. Also, by if you know about a group by the name of Stone Panda, this could be asked in your preliminary exam, so be careful about it. If you know about this group, this group actually caught the vulnerabilities that were existing in the information and technology supply chain software of Bharat Biotech, which has developed Covaxin. And if we talk about Serum Institute of India, which has developed Covishield, these two IT chains had been attacked, these two companies' IT chains. So, this could be seen that yes, it was done in order to gain a competitive advantage because in the last half of the year 2020, when vaccination programs, the when a development of vaccine was the most wanted thing in the world, such software hackers developed. And not only India is a victim of it, but US as well as if we talk about Japan, Japan has also been a very great victim. So, first is that Secondly, so if we talk about another breach, that is the breach when it comes to cyber attack when it came to power sector. Now, there was a Chinese group by the name of Red Echo. Red Echo developed a malware by the name of Shadowpad. Now, what did Shadowpad do? Shadowpad used backdoor entry to access the supply demand chain of the power sector and try to in, intrude into large suites of power supply and distort the entire structure, the power grid of India. Now, if we talk about it, it is very interesting because although in this offensive, the Chinese government, the Chinese army is not actually 
a major offense. This is not the primary offensive, but of course, it is showing that it is trying to develop and encourage offensive in the cyber sector. It could also be seen as when distractions in this sector occur, they are causing harm in another sector. So this is extremely important for India to understand the Chinese intentions. Now, if we talk about cyber attack, what is cyber attack basically? Cyber attack is using malware, ransomware, any kind of trojan in order to intrude illegitimately in the internet section, in the IT section of any country or any company in order to illegitimately take hold of that information and cause harm. So, if we talk about the motives behind cyber attack, why is it, why is it done in the first place? To seek commercial gain by hacking banks and financial institutions. Now, when it comes to the vaccine sector, to gain competitive advantage, such softwares such as such malwares such as Stone Panda's malware, they worked in order to get into the section, the vulnerable section of IT and have information to gain a competitive advantage. Similarly, it could be done to financial institutions. Also to attack critical assets of a nation, the power grid, a very important asset, as well as many other assets such as intelligence. What if the intelligence section gets hacked? by different countries such as China to penetrate into both corporate as well as military data servers to obtain plans and intelligence, right? Also, to hack sites to virally communicate a message for some specific campaign related to politics and society and harm the entire law and order of a country to induce propaganda, to disperse propaganda. So these are all kinds of motives. And if we talk about the types of malware programs, the types of malware they occur, such as viruses. Now viruses are attached to a person's email and if you click on the link, your computer might or your software might get corrupted with virus. It may get infected with virus. And ransomware, what does ransomware do? Ransom means it encrypts your files keeps the information as a hostage and then in exchange of some something in return such as money could make you to pay that money and then only that information will be made available to you. Also scareware, now this particular scareware is done in order to make a user fake purchase program. Also spyware, when spyware your software gets infected with spyware all the, the vigilance is done, the surveillance is done on the basis of your communication channel. Also Trojans, now they actually steal personal data, spying or even crashing your computer leading into the loss of data. Also adware, now it means popping adwares on different sites in order for you to click at them. It's a clickbait and then infect your software with virus. So these are the different kinds of malware. Now if we talk about cyber attack and cyber security, first is application security. Application security means having some measures and countermeasures when it comes to development of an application in order to see that the applications do not have certain defects while their development, if we talk about upgradation as well, and further boosting of the application. There should be no defect or no vulnerability during that stage of development of an application. Information security in the sense that information must be kept private, it must be kept very safe and it couldn't be breached from any other network. That is another security. Network security means the reliability and the integrity of the network is secure. Also, Disaster recovery planning, that means risk assessment as well as having proper strategies for recovery of information if in case it gets attacked. So these are the different ways. Also, if we talk about the need, first is for individuals, the photos and videos as well as other personal data, which is extremely important for the privacy of an individual, needs to be 
properly secured in order for keeping the privacy under the Article 21 of the Indian Constitution, of course. So, for individuals, it's very necessary for business organization because it's a competitive world and businesses, they do generate a lot of data. That is why it is needed that business organizations, they should keep their data if, uh, safe, safeguarded in a safe place to safeguard the information in order to have a proper respect when it comes to corporate respect and not let other companies to get hold of its data in order to have a competitive advantage and lose faith. The public shan't lose faith in that company. Also for government, now government at the local state as well as the central level has a huge amount of confidential data. If that gets breached, the public law and order could be distorted. The military information if gets hacked, the security and integrity, sovereignty of a country can get compromised. So these are the various needs. If we talk about the laws related first is the Information Technology Act. Now, Information Technology Act of 2000, it basically deals with the computers, computer system, computer network, as well as electronic data that is stored in here. Now, it talks about offenses such as hacking, cyber terrorism. Cyber terrorism means getting hold of protected data and using it against the sovereignty and integrity of a country. Also, tampering of the devices are included. And strategies under Cyber Policy 2013, in order to generate an environment which is cyber safe and cyber secure, and also develop human resources under it in order to create awareness, training and information training to the IT sector. So this is the proper laws. These are the laws. If we talk about CERT in Computer Emergency Response Team, now this works under the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology, Government of India. Its aim is to secure Indian cyberspace and it is the nodal agency which deals with cyber security threats like hacking and phishing. Now it collects, analyze, analyzes and disseminates information on cyber incidents and also issues alert on cyber security incidents. CERT in provides incident prevention and response services as well as security quality and management services. Now first, if we talk about the challenges, there is a lot of challenge when it comes to securing digital or the cyberspace of India. Why? Because increased population leads to increased number of mobile users and they are not very aware of the challenges that are lurking in the dark. First is that. Secondly, proliferation of internet of things. That means things which have certain connections amongst themselves in order to give advantage to the user, give comfort to the user, right? So internet of things and lack of proper security infrastructure because there is not a very robust data protection bill that has not a very robust data protection law that has come into being. So that is another challenge. And cyberspace, it the nature of it is inherent, it has inherent vulnerabilities. This can't be ex extremely el eliminated, but only we can minimize the defects in them. So that's another challenge and internet technology makes it relatively easy to misdirect if we talk about attributions to other parties. That is another challenge. Now, if we talk about the government initiatives, the first government initiative is Cyber Suraksha, Surakshit Bharat Initiative. This was launched in the year 2018. And this was launched in order to make aware the IT sectors, the frontline IT sectors of the government of India, as well as the chief information services officer aware about the need to have a cyber secure space, right? National Cyber Security Coordination Center, it was developed in the year 2017 in order to analyze and monitor the internet trafficking, the data that is coming into India as well as communication metadata. Also, to have real-time information of any threats if they are occurring. And Cyber Swachita Kendra, this was developed in the year 2017 in order to make the users aware 
of to have a portal a platform for the users in order to cleanse their software of any viruses and education and awareness project now under this more than 1 lakh people have been trained through 52 centers in order to have awareness about how viruses and how cyber threats can occur also international cooperation india has cooperated with countries such as the us singapore japan in order to build a very robust firewall against hackers especially from china chinese are extremely ambitious now if we talk about the way forward we need to as always conclude on a positive note as a bureaucrat you must know that so real time intelligence is required for preventing and containing cyber attacks now this exercise the vigilance exercise which has been into being since the last months since the last few months of 2020 it wants these different sectors which are extremely vulnerable to hackers in order to keep them safe these wanted that any major attack should be cooperated and coordinated and informed to cert in in order to make sure that sectors are the sectors data are not compromised first is that and it says that we need real time information because one attack it could lead to several other 10 attacks which are in the pipeline to get collapsed so that is what we need periodical backup of data is it's extremely important it's a solution to ransomware so that your information is safe and the ransomware is unable to get hold of your information the monopoly of your information second is that the way forward also using artificial intelligence for predicting and accurately identifying attacks using the knowledge gained from actual attacks that have already taken place in building effective and pragmatic or realistic defense we need increased awareness about cyber threats for which digital literacy is required first of course india needs to secure its computing environment and iot internet of things with current tools patches updates and best known methods in a timely manner so that means if any attack has occurred we need to be careful of what was the pattern of that attack how that attack was dismantled and similar procedure similar knowledge should be distributed amongst different countries so that these data could be safeguarded also increased awareness is important campaigns should be involved here campaigns and community participation is extremely important and internet of things of course this is the future for india and these should be having proper safeguards as well and extremely important is the data protection bill which has remained a bill not has turned into a law we need that as well the most important so can you please name to ransomware in the comment section thank you so much and let's move on to our main question discuss the potential threats of cyber attacks and security framework to prevent it in 150 words so i hope you will be able to answer it that's it for today tomorrow we shall meet again with another segment until then stay updated and thank you so much for watching